So obviously you see a side dress bar, it's got the bar all the way up. He's max height. If you look down at the other end, we got three colders that are about that far off the ground. So we're at a late, lot later opportunity. Like I told you, this corn's a little taller than I like. I wasn't expecting corn to be up to my armpits, but it's just kind of the nature of the beast. Oh, you're fine right there. So I get this question all the time, and they say, well, if we put wide drops on, can we go later? Absolutely. I think your axles and your tractor height are going to be your limiting factor. So we come out here, and we're asking us to put nitrogen on top versus nitrogen with a coulter. So in other words, if we drew a 30-inch row of corn here, so this is 30 inches apart, and right here at the 15-inch center, we came in with a coulter at 15 inches, and we put on nitrogen, you'd say, well, Greg, how's it get any better than that? Oh, by the way, we put it two inches deep. And you look at that and you say, well, that's where I want mine. Boy, this scares me. You start talking about coming along here, and we got a plant here, and you're coming along, and you're putting nitrogen on both sides of that. That's on top of the soil. How is that going to work? And so we've got years of experience and lots and lots of checks. So we're in working with Ken Ferry and Farm Journal, and they got a plot out. And so they came in and they put 100 pounds of nitrogen on and it didn't rain for 41 days down by Blue Mound, Illinois. And Dennis Nolan's the farmer's name. But Dennis come in and we had wide drop versus coulter all the way across that field every other pass. For 41 days they went with no rain last year. And the farmer's nervous. He said, well, I don't know what's going to happen here. And they harvest the plot and the wide drop wins same amount of nitrogen by 10 bushel average and everybody's like where's the magic there can't be any magic in this hose it's all about positioning when we have these wet mornings like we had this morning if you walk in a cornfield you see what you see stem water you realize if we get a tenth of an inch of rain tonight the root system sees 8x that's the way God created corn all that water runs down the leaves and it's eight times, so it's eight tenths in the root system. So to prove this, we said to Dr. Mulvaney, he's a soil scientist, he's an environmentalist at the University of Illinois. He looks it in like part of the problem. So we went to him, he said, mix us up some nuclear nitrogen. We want to test this. Because we got trials all over Iowa and Illinois, eight bushel, 10 bushel, seven bushel all around at the same amount of nitrogen. So we went out at 100 pounds and corn this tall with a coulter and a wide drop. And now they can measure the end take up in the plant because it never leaves. In fact, we went back to that same field today, you could still find that nitrogen. That nuclear nitrogen is gonna be there forever. And we took a mature plant to the university, a lot of them. Their undergrounds grounded up, the tassel, the leaves, the ear, the silk, the stalk. Guess where the 10 bushel comes from? Where we did it beside the row, we had a 25% more in in the plant. So when we talk about the same amount of nitrogen yielding more, it's because we're more efficient. So Kurt, go ahead and fire up here, run a little water, pretend it's nitrogen, and we're going to be running right on each side of this corn plant, and we're going to show you what placement looks like. So for this year, for the first time in four years, I ran two pass wide drop. So we got the V6 here, I'm at the proving grounds, I'm probing 12 inches deep and putting it in soil scan. Soil scan says, there's no nitrogen out here. The highest rating I had was six parts per million of nitrate. I had a two, a three, a six. Remember at 10 parts per million, we start. And so I told our guys, this is on June, about June 4th, I said, guys, we're running out of nitrogen. We had 60 on at the planter and it was banded. Now we know, that banding in is 2x over a broadcast. If we came in here and just ran a floater over this ground and put 120 pounds of nitrogen on, and if we came in and we banded it 60 pounds in a concentrated band, guess which one will win? Because microbials, these good guys, these guys are always out here, what are they gonna do to that broadcast in? They're going to use the nitrogen to break down all this residue, whether it's bean straw or corn stubble. 
they break it down. There's 36,000 pounds per acre. 36,000 pounds per acre of mic. You realize how many steers that is? That's 36 steers per acre that weigh 1,000 pounds. You guys got a 6.4 pH? Give yourselves a pat in the back, attaboys. You're gonna have 36, 36 steers per acre at 1,000 pounds each. You look out your kitchen window and you say, man, Maul, that's a really nice pin of steers. If you take your pH to 5.7, to 5.9, how many steers do you have per acre of Mike and his team? Guess what? You kill them all, but what? 1,000 pounds. pHs. So when I have a young man that comes into me at a fall show and he says, boy, my line of credit's really getting full. My lineman guy said it was going to be $28 an acre. I told him we can go another year. I said, where's your pHs? He said, well, I think around six. I said, you don't want to go another year. You're killing off all the good guys. These guys are going to give you 80 to 100 pounds free. I like that word. That's better than garage sailing. Free, no pennies at all. These guys are going to give you if you maintain healthy soil. And so those are things you just got to know. These are things that corn's just going to count on you as their manager having in place. This year, they never showed up. And so we came out on June 4th and we put in 60 pounds across all of our acres with the deer sprayer. The Hagee was busy and we put the deer sprayer on in the line and we gave everything 60 pounds. We waited, we came back at the beginning of July about the July 12th and we finished it with another 60 pounds. So let's take a look at this. I guess if you had to, you could go in here and get this corn at this late of a date. If you had constant rain, you didn't have any nitrogen on. I had some farmers across from me at the lunch table. They asked me the question. They said, we didn't get our in on what's our options at this stage. Well, you're either going to get a Hagee in with a high Y drops or you're gonna bring an airplane in and do urea, but you gotta feed the plant. So, we're doing some damage in the center, there's no question. Yeah, it's a hot afternoon, we're bending it over, but I'll, I'll guarantee you we had to snap some. So I don't wanna see us being our first pass. I would say we're a little late. You can see the water stream there, what it's looking like as it is each side of the roof. I put our transfer trailer out that we put together in our farm shop. It's a 5,000 gallon little trailer. It's got a design system of six pellets of bulk chemical. We went ahead, Cindy and I, we're always concerned for the safety of our young farmers that work with us. So we put in a Surefire Quick Draw mixing station. You never touch a chemical. It sucks it out of the mini bulks, all computerized. It has a very highly sensitive calibrated device that calibrates the exact amount of, of each chemical and relationship off the computer screen. So in the winter, we make all of our recipes. For our farm, we're covering five different crops. We have 23 different mixes of chemical. So you just can't afford a mistake. If we spray the wrong chemical on our own farm, there is no insurance. If I kill 80 acres of corn, Greg owns 80 acres of burnt corn. And so that trailer has been a tremendous asset to us. As our farm grows, our plan is we'll always have that mixing station at the field where the Hagee is. We'll bring a pickup and another trailer, and we'll take hot loads to sprayer number two, but we'll always utilize that technology. As we come around, you'll see what we normally do is we'll be putting nitrogen on our last pass as corn is starting to silt. So this year, you know, on July 12th through the 19th, we had corn that was tasseling and silking. We made our last pass of in, and so we're using Y-Drop. You can see we have a Hagee, which is a much taller unit, and we got 84-inch risers. Jan's going to take off here. He's going to be using our guide and glide. This is glide, and so it's running on the ground, that tail, and it's keeping the boom so that the wide drops are exactly 12 inches off the ground. He's in auto steer mode. The wands in the center of the sprayer are keeping the sprayer in the exact position 
in the center of the row. So right at this point, Jan's totally hands-free. He's not guiding, driving and he's not touching the boom height. And so as he comes down, he's putting nitrogen on right beside the plant. And so as you can see here, as it comes by you, this is pretty tall corn. This corn's every bit 10 feet. So I think some of the corn over in the other plots was 11 foot. I would say this is 10 feet. And so this would be way too late. We got ears here that are well past brown silk, past milk. So you'd want your nitrogen on before this. When we talk about a late pass, we're talking about kernel depth. How do we add more weight to the kernel itself? The tall sprayers make quite a difference. You either have the Miller family or you have the Hagee family. You're not gonna come in if a deer or you know a, a row gator, a case sprayer at this stage, you're way out of the window. So you're gonna have to get ahead of the curve. You're gonna have to do your application way ahead of this. We'll talk a little bit here in the cut, what we got. So we talk about how this little tail works on the boom control. And so if I pick it up, it's gonna boom the boom height. If I let it down, it's gonna bring the broom down. So it's just gonna be able to come up and down over any type of terrain. If you look in the center, you can see the yellow wand. And so this wand's running right next to the corn row. I call it a poor man's GPS. I love the way Tim thinks. And so we take the existing deer Hagee system and all we're doing is snapping an AB line, and then the wands are intercepting the single from the globe to the power steering box, and we're saying, no, 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 your AB line needs to go four inches to the left or four inches to the right to be in the center, and that's all we're doing. And so it's a very inexpensive system that gets you a long ways down the road. You'll notice here that we have undercover here in the center. And so we can set these at any height on this riser. We got them set for this corn, where this corn is, for ear height. So let me grab one here. So we're talking about coming in and spraying this corn. And so this is a flat fan coming out this way. We got a flat fan going up. We got one coming to this side, and then we're using the top nozzles here coming down in a fungicide application. So when we look at a corn plant, you say, well, Greg, does fungicide pay? And so this is a hybrid that's got, you know, it kind of likes gray leaf. And so we start talking about from the bottom up. If I pull this off and we'll have Tim focus on it, you can see all the lesions here on that leaf. When we scout a field, Ferry has taught us, anything below the ear leaf, if you have enough lesions, and you start looking at these, and you can cover a quarter, it's time to spray. Well, we're way past that. Leaf number one back there, leaf number two probably has enough lesions. I have enough lesions right here to cover a quarter, six inches between my fingers. So this particular corn here was not sprayed. This is the only corn I own from here to the end that's not sprayed. And so we talk all the time about, does it pay to spray fungicides? Absolutely. In our program, we, we just we put it in. Tim and I run a spreadsheet in the winter, and I say, Tim, just put in the spreadsheet that we're gonna have a cost of $13 for fungicides. And what are we trying to do? We already told you in the sunlight session the value of this ear leaf. And so we're trying to protect this guy. Gray leaf comes from the bottom up, rust comes from the top down. And at the end of the day, we're just trying to say, is this ear gonna maintain the tip fill that we have. Now look at this guy. This guy here is an 18. I can tell I've counted enough ears. I'm going to say he's at least 32 to 33 long. And so the game for Greg right now is can we maintain and save every kernel and length that we have. The minute I give up a kernel, I gave up six bushel. If you told me, we said we don't believe in fungicide, We'd rather just go about costs. We just threw away 36 bushel. I just threw away six kernels. So 
We're going to show you a test. We're going to have undercover and a top nozzle running on this half of the Hagi. On the other half, we're just going to have top nozzle only. We're using the Laurel, which is a brand new Bear Monsanto product this year. I really like the dollar figure. And so we're putting on this farm here, had, a lot of it had 12 ounces. Most of our farms had eight ounces. That'll give us coverage for almost two and a half weeks. And we're talking about protecting that particular ear leaf. We also worry about the top three. So if I break this off here, if I'm gonna spray a fungicide, I would highly recommend to you that you put in an insecticide. Because we know a fungicide will take out, what are you worried about here, aphids. Aphids come in here, if you get a colony of aphids moving in here, you're gonna have billions of them. And they start to slick these top three leaves and they caramelize them. And you look at it, you say, man, that looks like you painted them. And so we immediately stop tip fill these top three. So, because the fungicide takes out their predator, which is a bacteria and a mold. And so if we can't kill the nature way aphids, we take that out, then immediately your aphid population explodes. I don't know how many times if we spray fungicide and not an insecticide, we're back in a week later. Now we're putting in a second pass of insecticide. And so now we doubled our cost. So for our farm, if we're gonna spray, and we do 100% of our acres with fungicide, we immediately drop in Hero. And we're just taking out everything at that stage, hoping we can get back to where nature starts to take over the cycle, and we don't have an explosion of aphids where we're gonna start to lose tip fill. So we're gonna run him down. Go ahead and start it up, Jan. And we got a plant down here of wet paper, top and bottom of every leaf. So we'll see exactly what kind of a spray pattern we had. There's your really tall corn coming out of the field. Tim will have the camera. We'll have Cameron here, but we had the undercover. This is a four nozzle system. Ben's coming around the corner and he's gonna have a single nozzle on the boom. Both rates are 23 gallon. I'm gonna suggest he was running probably seven mile an hour. So we'll start here at the bottom. So we'll start here at the bottom leaf. This would be the bottom. Pretty nice little coverage on the top. We'll turn him over. I didn't expect to see anything on the bottom. Same thing here. Top. Bottom's clean. Well, let's just show the bottom. We can speed this up. So this is the ear leaf itself. This is the golden ticket. Nothing here. Not too bad. I'll give him credit for that. Once again, a little on top. Nothing on the bottom. As we go, by the time we get up here, we start to see some. There's some on the bottom. If I rotate this plant slow, Tim, I see some there. Look at this guy up here. He must have got a full blast with the nozzle. So that's a bottom leaf there. So remember, 60 more percent of the leaf openings are underneath, not on top. That's why we're talking about chemical efficiency. We'll take Cameron's here. We'll take a look down here. I doubt if there's going to be in the bottom as low as he was hanging the top. I didn't expect any when he's hanging down like that. Let's take a look at this next one. We got top and we got bottom. If I can hold it right, Tim, can you see it? Yep, I think so. This That's one bent pretty sharp. We'll see if he got any at all. Yeah, he did. That's the one below the ear leaf. Here's one two leaves below ear leaf. Top. Top looks good. Bottom looks good. I like good. the bottom. Ear leaf's bent pretty sharp. Let's see. We got some there. Yep. So all the way up this plant, we're showing top and bottom. These are the kind of things that we're looking for. We're saying, can we get this kind of coverage on a plant so on the back side of a leaf, we can just increase yield. So this is why Undercover come to be. It was all about bringing in a simple concept of spraying from the underside up and getting more dollars of effectiveness out of our application.